today I'm back in the office and I wanted to share um, some information about road building. It's winter time and it's kind of the off season, quote unquote. Now there's still a lot to do. There's still stumping and there's still burning slash and other things going on. Um, but I've had a lot of people that reach out to us that, that uh, we do work for that want bids or estimates on driveways or access to property. And there is a lot to consider when you're buying property, even something as small as one acre, but certainly at five acres or 10 acres or 20 acres to start to consider roads and access and then to think long term about maintaining that road um, and how it's going to stand up to lots of traffic and lots of weather and then snow removal and mud season in the spring and on and on and on. So I've had people reach out wanting information about where we where we get our information. Do we go to an engineer? Yes, yes we do. In a lot of cases in on on projects there'll be an engineer involved and the engineer sets the standards and does all the design work to create the slopes and the grades and, and how many culverts and how big the ditches are. On some of the larger projects that have engineers we're looking to them for their design standards. But on more, more rural property we go to this book and this is just a wealth of information. This is the Idaho Forestry Best Management Practices Field Guide. Um, you can find these online. I'm sure if you if you Google Idaho Forestry Best Management Practices Field Guide, it's going to pop up. This was provided by the University of Idaho's Extension. It's at uh, www.extension.uidaho.edu. Uh, you might be able to go to that website. I'm sure that they update it. You can probably find older ones or maybe they're coming out with newer ones. So this one I picked up last year and it's got several sections in it that talk about different things. One is, um, let's see, Idaho watersheds, um, things to consider. And it's a really, really nice book, great pictures, lots of great information that, that talks about things here locally. Now, Maybe you're not in Idaho, and maybe this doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but I'm sure that your local area, wherever you're at, um, if you're in Montana or wherever you might be, I'm sure you're, there's a similar book provided that's, that's put out by your local agencies that's going to be similar to this. Uh, but this has got a, uh, just a wealth of information in it. So watersheds is one section just tons of information just probably more information than I need but nonetheless a great resource the next section is working forests and again lots of information about about soil and soil types great information talks about different uh, rocks in different areas of the state get to another section that's forest roads and that's the one that I'd like to talk about today is forest roads but just to give you an example of, of the other sections in this book we have stream crossings um, lots of great information culverts um, some some of the design standards I'm sure that a local engineer is probably pulling up some of these uh, best management practices and incorporating them in their design Another section is timber harvesting, lots of great information. Even if you've got a one acre, a five acre, a ten acre, it doesn't matter. You're going to have trees, especially Idaho, Montana, wherever you might be. And, and you'll notice that I mention Idaho and Montana because those are the only two places you should be. So you're going to have to deal with trees. And there's a lot of good information here, whether you, it's a, a small, small amount of trees or large amount of trees, there's going to be information in here that will help you make good decisions about managing your property. 
a couple more sections in this book post harvest activities how to burn slash uh, mechanical treatments prescribed burning some good information here a little little punch list do compact slash and large woody debris piles make sure they are free of stumps soil snow and non woody materials do fully cure slash piles allow to dry at least two months uh, prior to ignition do partially or fully cover slash piles with water resistant materials so they can be ignited after precipitation events so it sounds like I've got to tarp my slash piles before it rains or snows on them it's good advice I probably not going to do that but it's good advice hazardous substances so there's some talk about working out in the forest and this applies probably to those of us that are out there with equipment so don't leave our, our hydraulic cans or fuel cans or if we have a fuel spill be sure to reclimate that get it cleaned up hauled out of there don't leave it there so let's go back to forest roads that's the one I wanted to talk about uh, I've had a lot of people reach out so this book under forest roads has some some really great design ideas it talks about initially it talks about where to lay out the road how to lay it out how to how to consider the slope um, how to minimize the slope how to consider other runoff and drainage that might affect that road and how to put together a, a plan for your road and it even gives um, examples in this book of, of what you should be looking for and what you should be trying to avoid. One of the things that's really interesting is the road profiles and anyway, this book has these these three different road profiles. You have one that's called the open slope road uh, slopes outward toward the fill slope. Um, an in sloped road slopes to the uphill side of the road pro profile and the crowned surface road slope from the road center line to both sides. So um, there's a lot of design that, that goes into your road and what's going to work well for you. Um, talks about putting in culverts and, and dealing with the, the area where that water is going to be channeled. It's, it's interesting when you have a rain event and water is spread out over an area and it seems to to not have a lot of impact but as soon as you channel it into a ditch you put it into a culvert and you're focused all that water into a single location you're going to start moving sediment and see erosion and things like that so placing riprap uh, rock and other things to minimize that sediment erosion it, it goes into great detail in this book about that there's other other things that it talks about in the in the road design, uh, water bars, cross ditches, um, grades, soil types, um, culverts across roads. There's just really cool design ideas in here. Keep the following tips in mind. Do keep ditches at least one foot deep and free of debris, such as downed logs or large rocks that cause water to pool or be directed into the road surface. That is solid advice. Right. Do install relief culverts with a minimum 1%, but recommended 2 to 4% grade. Uh, do place the relief culverts at 30 degrees angle downgrade across the road. Do size the relief culverts adequately to handle maximum water volume expected. Now that's, that's really important. I see a lot of people that will show up and say, hey, I want to put in a culvert. And I say, okay, we recommend an 18 or a 24 inch culvert. And I, I tell them a price, hey, that, that's going to be three or $400 for that 20 foot piece of culvert. And they say, whoa, 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 man. Don't you have anything cheaper? What can't why can't we just use a one foot culvert? 
And the answer is, yeah, you that one foot culvert might be 180 bucks or whatever. The problem is that it's more susceptible to clogging up with a smaller opening. And if we have a really catastrophic event, um, we say it's early spring, we've got lots of snow and the temperatures warm up. Uh, if we get a bunch of rain and we get just a deluge of water, that's not going to be able to, to take that, that, that water all at once. And so oversizing the pipe, I tell people all the time, oversize it. Because it's better to have it and not use it than to need it and not have it. A lot of the culverts that we put into properties, whether it's coming off of county roads into driveways, we shoot for a minimum of, of 18, but preferably we, we go with a 24 inch culvert. And, and that's probably overkill. But I've seen what can happen when a 12 inch or even an 18 inch or any culvert gets plugged up and water starts to build up and back up and then flow over a road and wash out a road. It will do thousands of thousands of dollars worth of damage and destroy that road sometimes making it even impassable. An extra couple of hundred dollars on a culvert up front could save thousands of dollars worth of, of work down the road, especially if you've got to, to buy rock product and you've got to get it trucked in and you've got to get it placed and you've got to get it compact, compacted. Um, it starts to get really expensive. There's, there's just certain places where you can save money. Culverts should not be one of those overbuild it, over-engineer it, oversize it. And if you don't ever have to use it, that'd be great. But the one time that you get a, a big rainstorm, you're gonna be really glad that you have it, especially if it doesn't wash out your road. Do ensure that the culvert outlet extends beyond the fill area. It just empties into a stable area. Stable meaning uh, it's not just dirt and soil, it's got vegetation on it or it's got riprap and rock that can't be washed out to keep that area from from being washed out. Again, this has been a really good resource for us that we try and share with with customers and clients and in our business and and what we look to in doing our property, our own personal property and that working for other people on their property and I I wanted to share this resource as something that if you can look for it, you find it, it's absolutely worth having. You know, we've done quite a few videos on this channel about where to get good information for um, buying property, for living in North Idaho, and we've talked about Code of the West, which has got some good information, good things to think about before you buy property. Um, we've talked about some of the resources that are online with Bonner County's GIS maps, mapping system. You can find those videos. Um, in fact, we'll leave a, a link up here and check out some of those videos. We've also looked at some federal websites uh, for wetlands, some of those wetland maps that are out there. And this is another great resource. Again, Idaho Forestry Best Management Practices Field Guide. It would be worth having this book and reading through it probably from time to time, especially if you live in a rural environment and you are going to be maintaining and taking care of your own roads, if you're going to be taking care of your own little chunk of, of forest, if you've, if you've got water that you're dealing with, there's lots of good information here. This is another great resource. And I hope you find it useful and thanks for watching the videos. We, we really appreciate it and we'd love to get your feedback if you if you are able to find this or if you find it for another state or if there's another resource like this that maybe is more in depth or or a better resource please share it down in the comments below the idea here is to, to help people to be a good resource for information and help people to make good decisions thanks a bunch we'll catch you on the next video